So we can rewrite any linear differential equation in operator form ly equals h of t using a linear differential operator l where l can be viewed as a characteristic polynomial in d, the differential operator. So all of this is very nice and it allows us to rewrite a differential equation in a much simpler form, but does this do us any good? In other words, how can this help us solve differential equations? So suppose L is a linear differential operator and Y1 and Y2 are two of the solutions to Ly equals zero. Then, for any constant C1 and C2, what do we get when we apply L to the linear combination C1Y1 plus C2Y2? Remember, the linearity property of our linear differential operator says that if we apply L to a sum, it's the sum of L applied to the individual sum ends. So this is L applied to C1Y1 plus L applied to C2Y2. But again, the linearity of L means that L applied to C1Y1, since C1 is a constant, we can remove that constant factor to the front. So this is going to be C1 L applied to Y1. And similarly, L applied to C2Y2, well that's just going to be C2 times L applied to Y2. But wait, there's more. Since Y1 and Y2 are solutions to our differential equation Ly equals 0, this means that L applied to Y1 is 0, and L applied to Y2 is also 0. And so this expression simplifies to 0. And consequently, any linear combination of solutions to Ly equals 0 is a solution to Ly equals 0. In other words, linear combinations of solutions will also give you a solution. So that's amazing. That's wonderful. That's extremely useful. Once we have a solution, we can find more. Except, how do we find solutions? Well, let's consider a few simple cases. So let's consider the simplest characteristic polynomial, d minus a, where a is a real number. This characteristic polynomial corresponds to the differential equation d minus a applied to y equals 0. And let's rewrite this in a more familiar form. Remember, this is the differential operator, so this is really the differential operator applied to y minus a times y. Or, writing this as a differential equation, dy over dx minus ay equals 0. And this is a separable differential equation, so we'll solve it. And so our differential equation has solution y equals c e to power a x. And so now we know what to do if our characteristic polynomial is linear. Now admittedly this isn't very exciting because our linear characteristic polynomials correspond to separable differential equations and we already know how to solve those. So it doesn't seem like we've really gained anything. So now let's consider the characteristic polynomial L and suppose R is a root. Then L can be written in the form L star applied to D minus R, where L star is another characteristic polynomial. So let's consider what happens if we try to apply L to our solution C e to power Rx. So L applied to C e to the Rx, well that's really L star applied to D minus R applied to C e to power Rx. So if I apply d minus r to c e to the rx, that's really d applied to c e to the rx minus r times c e to the rx. Remember, this is just the derivative of this function, which is going to be. And so this becomes. 
and that means L star is going to be applied to 0. But since L star is a linear differential operator, it consists of a whole bunch of derivatives. Well, if I take the derivative of 0 and then add a constant times 0, I get 0. And so this means that c e to the power r x is a solution to our original differential equation. And this gives us an amazingly powerful method of solving higher order differential equations. Let L be the linear differential operator for a differential equation. If r is a root of the corresponding characteristic polynomial, c e to the power r x is a solution to the differential equation. And since linear combinations of solutions will also be solutions, this means we can find a general solution which will look like a linear combination of terms with factor e to power r x. So for example, let's find two different families of solutions to the differential equation y double prime minus 3y prime equals minus 2y. So first we'll rewrite the equation in operator form, and this means we need to get all of our y terms over onto the left hand side. So we'll rewrite. This second derivative is d2 applied to y. This first derivative is d applied to y, and 2y is just 2y. Not factoring but rewriting in function notation. This is the same as d2 minus 3d plus 2 applied to y. And so our linear differential operator can be written as d squared minus 3d plus 2. The roots of the characteristic polynomial occur where the polynomial is equal to 0. So we'll set that polynomial equal to 0 and solve. And so the roots are d equals 2 and d equals 1. So we can summarize our results so far. The characteristic polynomial is d squared minus 3d plus 2 with roots d equals 2 and d equals 1. Our theorem says that each of these roots corresponds to a solution of the form e to power rx. And so our solutions to the differential equation are going to be y equals c1 e to power 2x and y equals c2 e to power x. And a general solution will be a linear combination of these. And a useful check is to remember that you should have as many undetermined constants as the order of the differential equation. This is a second order differential equation. We should have two undetermined constants, c1 and c2.